Welcome to this recording of Climate Conversations, a production of Climate Action KC and Mark here in Kansas City. These are a effort that we are putting together to form our climate action plan and engage in a online dialogue um, via Mind Mixer that we're having over several weeks here in June. Um, to have climate conversations in Kansas City. My name is Julie Sayers. Um, I am the engagement chair for Climate Action KC, and I serve on the city council in Lenexa. We are pleased today to have a climate conversation with Representative Cherise Davids. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, inviting me to participate in this. I'm very excited about the work that Climate Action KC and, uh, and that Mark, our Mid-America Regional Council, is uh, doing around this really important topic. So thank you. Um, we just have a couple of questions for you today, Sharice. Um, the first is kind of a two part. Um, you work for the Department of Transportation and sit on the infrastructure committee. How does infrastructure play a key role in making our nation more climate resilient? And what trends do you see that would provide access to jobs and clean air? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, thanks for, for, for addressing these topics. I mean, during my time as a White House fellow, when I spent my day to day at the Department of Transportation, I always tell folks I left that experience as a born again uh, transportation enthusiast. And uh, during that time, I got the chance to see uh, two sides of the coin. One is uh, internally, how can folks who are working on transportation and infrastructure issues really infuse um, resiliency, sustainability, and also uh, equity into the work they're doing. And then how do we uh, make sure uh, when it's public facing that we're engaging in, com engaging in community conversations, which I know Climate Action Casey and Mark both do a lot of. Um, you know, how do we take those things to get some of the best ideas about things like sustainability and resiliency? Um, you know, when you think about the work that's happening uh, uh, across the country, you know that uh, infrastructure is one of the key uh, drivers of things like emissions, how we uh, use um, and make use of the uh, energy sources, whether they're non-renewable or renewable. And so that means that it also is one of the key drivers for us to push towards sustainability and resiliency. Uh, in the House, now that I'm a member of Congress, I get the chance to uh, sit on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. We have had over 70 uh, uh, hearings that have uh, focused on climate, change issues of resiliency and sustainability uh, in the House since uh, the beginning of this congressional session. And I think that, you know, all of us, whether we're on uh, committees like the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee or other committees, we should all be thinking about the ways that we can move toward renewables, that we can increase the uh, resiliency of our uh, systems. And I think that we're seeing that now. Uh, it is a normal part of conversations to ask, uh, is this uh, going to help us be more resilient in the future? And so I think that, um, you know, from the perspective of transportation and infrastructure, I just think this is an area where we where we really have the opportunity to um, have a huge impact. Agreed. And, you know, we are fortunate in Kansas to have the benefit of all the wind energy that now is becoming so prevalent. Um, so right. that's where you have a great advantage there. Um, you mentioned equity, um, which certainly is top of mind for a lot of people right now. Um, our second question today is that there's a huge link between most vulnerable populations and the impacts of climate change. Do you have thoughts on how we can address the overlap, um, either via workforce development, green jobs, um, federal assistance for energy efficiency, anything like that? Yeah, that's a really um, uh, a really great topic for folks to be thinking about. Uh, when I was so when I got the chance to uh, work at the Department of Transportation, I actually spent a decent amount of time uh, working in the Departmental Office of Civil Rights. And uh, often folks would say, "What what does uh, the Department of Transportation have to do with civil rights?" And uh, the answer 
uh, like most things with infrastructure and transportation is everything. Um, and uh, I say that because when you see things like social determinants of health, uh, access to opportunity, um, and also uh, the, the places that uh, specific projects end up happening, a lot of times you see that uh, equity and um, even issues of racial justice uh, can come into play. Uh, so the, the infrastructure system of our country was developed over a long period of time. And uh, there were plenty of times where you saw um, both intentional and unintentional uh, expanding or closing off of opportunities for specific communities. And um, I think that uh, it, I know that there are, are things that Climate Action KC and Mark are doing to try to alleviate that, whether it's uh, public input um, conversations. There are also, uh, when it comes to uh, NEPA, which is the environmental um, uh, component when projects are getting done, it's the law that governs that. It requires a public input uh, uh, portion. I think that when you think about where are the best ideas for how to make things more equitable, how to make things um, uh, more sustainable for a community. Getting community input is one of the biggest pieces of that. Um, and so that's, that's one piece that I, I think is really, really important. The other piece from the perspective of someone who sits on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee is, you know, we have the in INVEST Act is coming up and this is the Surface Transportation Reauthorization Act, and um, that that bill has uh, has so many provisions in it that relate to climate change and resiliency. And I think that what we have to do as lawmakers is always make sure when we're looking uh, at the bills that we're passing that the that there's a lens around uh, climate and resiliency, and that there's also a lens around equity, making sure that uh, that our vulnerable populations or um, traditionally uh, marginalized communities are not left out of that conversation. And, and that has happened for a long time. And I think right now we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a lot of folks who are saying that like we need elected officials who are gonna be listening to what we have to say. Um, and I think that, I think we're hopefully on the precipice of a lot of um, amazing change in this country. Mm -hmm. You've always spoken about getting new and different people to the table. It's one of the things that I think a lot of people appreciate about you. Um, and CAKC, to the same extent, released our equity statement on Monday. Um, we put that out on our social channels and I believe on the website. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to look at it, I'd invite you to, to, to have a look. It's a really, yeah. really good statement, too. Yeah. Uh, last question. We asked this of all of our panelists on Climate Conversations. Uh, what is your vision for a climate resilient Kansas City? Oh, well, I think <laughs> there's, there's, of course, like big picture things and then, um, uh, and then some specifics. Some of the specifics I think about are when it comes to issues of flooding, when it comes to issues of uh, making sure that our uh, levees and uh, waterways are not just taken care of in terms of avoiding flooding, but also taken care of in terms of making sure that they're clean um, and, and that sort of thing. That's really important to me. Um, making sure that we're really supporting our wind uh, and wind energy, which is huge here, but so is um, solar. And then I think big picture, what I think about is, um, you know, continuing to see uh, you know, the Climate Action KC initiative, having such a broad coalition of folks uh, working on it. I think, I think making sure that as many people as possible are thinking about, thinking about this issue and participating in things like Climate Action KC, uh, because at the end of the day, I think pretty much all of us want to see this place uh, uh, left better than it was when we got here so that, you know, the next generation and the one after that and the one after that have um, really have the, the opportunity to live a, a vibrant uh, and thriving life. 
That's excellent. Thank you. Um, so for those of you who are watching, if you've been inspired by our talk today, we would invite you to engage in the Mind Mixer dialogue, which is climateactionkc.mindmixer.com. Climateactionkc.mindmixer.com. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Please join the conversation and continue engaging in these topics. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks, Julie. You bet. Thank you.